Hey, uh, so on the line right now, we do have uh, Christian Wolf, Matema Atonga coach. Christian, thank you so much for joining the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, Christian, you, uh, there's probably a lot going on, and you, there's probably a lot of people uh, wanting to talk to you right now. So uh, it's really nice that you would join us um, on today's show. Now, in past interviews that the both of us have, uh, have had together, uh, you've mentioned to me that you've been massive and uh, big on Pacific players uh, playing for the Pacific Nations. My first question to you is, did you play any part in Jason Taumlolo's decision to play for Tonga? Yeah, look, to be honest, not really. Um, yeah, I've known Jason for a long time, and he obviously played for Tonga back in 2013, uh, both in the May Tests and also at the World Cup. And uh, ever since then, even though Jason's played for New Zealand, and I, I do know that he's very, very proud to represent New Zealand as well, and that's obviously where he's he's growing up. But uh, he's always expressed a desire to, to play for Tonga while he's at his best. And you know, both his parents are Tongan and, and uh, you know, born and bred in Tonga. And, He's very, very proud of that, and, and they're very proud as well. And uh, So he's always expressed that he's got that desire to, to, as I said, play for Tonga while he's at his best. And I was never quite sure when that might be, but um, uh, yeah, he, he gave me a phone call a couple of days ago and said that that was what he's considering to do, and um, yeah, that he uh, it, 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 uh, yeah, the conversation sort of went that he needed to let New Zealand know what his thoughts were, and uh, and make a decision, and, and then he, he ran back yesterday to confirm that that was exactly what he wanted to do, and, and that he was committed to playing for Thomas. So, uh, to be honest, I didn't have to work all that hard. He, um, it, it's, it's, you know, very much his decision. There's uh, just controversy going around, and actually, uh, you know, uh, personally, it kind of bugged me because I didn't get why people had such a big problem with it and a big issue with him playing for Tonga over the Kiwis. When you know, people said you can't just do that, you can't just leave Kiwis and go to Tonga, but no one had a problem with him when he left Tonga and went to the Kiwis. Um, I guess, what's your response as the coach to the team? What's your response to that and to people who who would find it? possibly annoying. Benji Marshall came out and said it's disrespectful to the Kiwi shirt. What's your response to that? Yeah, look, I agree with what you said before. Uh, no one seems to worry too much when a, a player gets pulled from a Tier 2 nation into a Tier 1, uh, and that happens all the time. And uh, If you look at all the guys who have made the decision to play for Tonga, they've all played for Tonga uh, previously and played for Tonga before they've played for New Zealand as well. And, yeah, that includes guys like Siwa Takiaho, um, Manemau, uh, Dave Fusatua, uh, all of those guys, as I said. So, yeah, there doesn't tend to be much noise made when it goes the other way. But I, I guess the big difference is that it's not something that's happened before. And, uh, you know, Solomon Cutter and, and Conrad Arell were certainly the first two to put their hand up and say that they didn't want to be considered for New Zealand, that they wanted to be considered for Tonga only. And, um, you know, they're probably not quite the same profile as Jason, so it didn't have quite the same impact. But, uh you know, the difference is that Jason, you know, in my opinion and a lot of others, is the best best forward in the game at the moment and certainly one of the best players. So uh, when he makes a stand and, and says that that's what he wants to do, it's certainly big news and uh, certainly controversial. And I, I think that him and all the other players need to be really applauded and uh, should be everyone should be really proud of the courage they've shown. It's not easy to make the sacrifice that those guys have and, and there's you know, some really big reward for playing for the Tier 1 Nations. And... Um, yeah, they've shown they've made a really brave call and shown that uh, they play for different reasons other than money. That's for sure. And um, you know, as I said, I think they need to be applauded for it. Uh, Christian, how, how do you feel being in this position? You know, you might possibly have the best ever Tongan uh, squad MMT has ever seen. I mean, I, I've kept my eye on a couple of teams myself, and you know, nothing has really uh, impressed me as much as what I've seen right here on paper. And even the media reports, you know, you, you answer most questions positive and quite confident as well. I mean, but is there any added pressure to, to deliver this year? Oh, well, there is going to be added pressure, yeah. There's going to, certainly going to be some expectation. And you know, I know just from my conversations with people back in Tonga that there's some real excitement about... There's excitement anyway in the fact that they're, you know, we're always bringing the Tongan team to Tonga, which we do next Wednesday. And, um, you know, there was always that excitement around guys that I mentioned before, Solomon Cutter and Conrad Arell. Michael Jennings, uh, we've had some good name players there for a long time, but now that these guys have uh, made that decision and the, um, you know, I guess the uh, the interest that that's created as well, and and the fact that they've actually you know, pulled themselves out of uh, tier one teams or, or made the decision that they don't want to be involved in a tier one team, um, yeah, then that's certainly created even more excitement and, and more expectation and pressure with that, I suppose. So. 
Um, you know, I, I think the really good thing from our point of view, if you have a look through the sport, is there's some really talented and young up-and-coming players. Uh, but there's also a good mix of older, experienced guys that have uh, played test footy for both Tonga and New Zealand and, and Australia before. And yeah, that certainly helps to deal with the pressure. And um, you know, I think having guys like Andrew Fafida and Jason Tomololo and, and Sio Takiyo, that, that gives a, a young guy playing beside them some some real confidence in terms of how to deal with that pressure and expectation as well. So, yes, we are going to have some pressure and expectation, but uh, I, I think we're we're very well equipped to deal with it. And uh, you know, the other thing is that, that everyone needs to realise that just before, just because we've named some big name players doesn't mean that we're going to have success. You know, we. We need to get together next Wednesday. We need to come together as a group really well and, and want to play for each other and play together. And uh, We need to work really hard between now and our first game against Scotland if we're going to have any success. Christian, you're, you're too humble, mate. We all know that you've got a solid side. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Fafita, you know, you mentioned him before. Uh, he left Tonga, though, earlier this year for Australia. I personally was annoyed at that. I didn't like that. Um, but what is it that you think made him come back from maybe a conversation that you've had with him recently to come back and play for Tonga for the big Rugby League World Cup, whether that was already a big plan of his? Uh, what do you think it was personally for him that said, you know, even though I went to Australia and did that thing earlier this year, why would someone like him uh, decide to come back and play for Tonga for the World Cup? Yeah, and, and look, I've been involved with both of his decisions there. I know he's, he's found it really, really tough on both occasions, as all the players do, and, you know, Andrew's uh, grown up in Australia. His mother's Australian. His father's Tongan. Um, his wife is actually uh, you know, part Tongan, part part Australian as well. And uh, yeah, so he's grown up very, very, uh, very, very close to his Tongan heritage, and uh, he's very, very proud of that. And at the same time, he's very proud of his Australian heritage. So uh, it, it is a, a bit of a grey one for a guy like Andrew, and uh, a very difficult one. And, and I know that uh, when he made that call in May, that he they rang me a number of times to to say how keen he was to play for Tonga and um, you know, how sorry he was that he made that decision. But again, you're not you're not comparing apples with apples when you make those decisions either. It's not just picking one nation over another. There's a lot of financial gain and and profile gain and things like that that come out of uh, uh, making an Australian side and playing for an Australian side. So uh, I, I certainly understood that decision um, and accepted that decision and. and uh, and told him that I'd support that decision. Um, you know, I, I understand that it's a very, very difficult one for you and for them. And um, you know, I, I can also understand how, how people outside of rugby league, I suppose, struggle a little bit with that. But it is a difficult one. Uh, I think he's really struggled with this decision to come back as well. And I, I know over the last week or, or two weeks, uh, he's rung me numerous times and texted me numerous times. He's chopped and changed what he wanted to do and. Uh, to be completely honest, once he was named in the Australian side, I, I thought that that was what he would do. Uh, I just thought that he was sacrificing too many things to uh, come and play for Tonga. Um, but he rang me this morning and said that that was his intention. And uh, his next phone call after speaking to me was to Mel Meninga. And I, I think what really set his mind at ease was that Mel Meninga was very, very supportive of his decision and uh, told him to go with his heart. And that's what he's done. I love that. I love that. This is the, the part of rugby league that I love the most. There's so much on field um, stuff, but the things that like that behind the, the scenes is, is a beautiful thing. Uh, Christian, I don't want to keep on holding you. I'm sure there's a billion people that want to, that want to speak to you, but um, we, need, we need to know this. Now, I want to know if this is true or not, that thanks to sponsors, that players in the Matema Tonga side will be receiving around 5K uh, to play for Tonga this year. Is that true? Look, we are going to be able to pay the players, but it's not quite going to be that much. Um, it's, it's going to be a... I, I sort of don't have an exact figure for you, to be honest, but we're certainly going to be in a position to be able to give them a couple of grand, yes. Awesome. That's a beautiful thing, because we've spoken about that in, in, in the past, too, and I know it's a developing thing, uh, but what that says to me is that we're starting to progress. You know, it started with the eligibility, um, and now we've uh, come over there, and now we're starting to get somewhere with a little bit more money, and you've got to be happy with that. Yeah, no, you're spot on there, and that's exactly what you know, I've been involved now for four years, and uh, we've always spoken about how we get a little bit better with every camp. And I, I've got to say, it's very, very tough sometimes. Um, they're trying to get Australian companies to sponsor a, a Tongan football team, um, and it's something that we've uh, we've developed a few sponsors that have, uh, I guess, we've looked after well, and, and we've earned their trust, and, and they've stayed with us now for a couple of years, and. Um, you know, with this year, with it being a World Cup year and obviously the, the promise of having some high-profile players, we've certainly been able to cre increase that a little bit. And, 
Yeah, without those sponsors, and, and Oriana are our biggest one, um, and the Tongan, Tongan government have, be, have come on as a sponsor as well. Uh, without those sponsors, we can't look after the players. We can't uh, bring extra staff, um, you know, outside of the eight that the World Cup provide. And I mean, we can't even do things like allowing the players to have massages and those little luxuries that they usually have as part of their NRL camps. So it's been terrific from that point of view just to get a little bit of income there. But the the thing that I'm really happy about is it's also allowed us to travel back to Tonga next week and yeah. uh, and stay stay at Tanoa there, uh, which is obviously a really nice motel as well, and make sure that we can do that sort of things properly because it's important that we connect with the people of Tonga and the people of Tonga connect with us. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Hey, Christian, thank you so much. It's a real privilege. I know I sound like I'm a Mate Tonga fan, but I'm not. I'm Samoan. I'm going for Samoa. <laughs> but, but I, I am a Pacific fan. I know, I know. Uh, Mons here will be, uh, will be screaming yeah, for I'll you be guys. In my red for real. <laughs> my red for no, real. Hopefully, we'll see you both in Hamilton. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'll be wearing the blue in Hamilton. Just wanted to let you know, <laughs> just in case you thought that I was a oh. Mate Tonga fan. Oh, man. Just in I, case. I might... I might just have to brush that interview then. I'll go with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Christian, it's a real privilege. Uh, and and it's, it's awesome to have you, man. We, we really do uh, appreciate you giving us some of your time, especially uh, in this season. No, no worries at all. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. Thank you.